Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a very special episode of Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances. And if you've been following the channel, you know I've got a couple different playlists going. We've got the This Is Not A Top 10, This Year In Perfume, Perfumer's Portfolio, and this is probably one of my favorite new episode ideas I've come up with, which is Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrances. One of you actually came up with that name. Uh, and so the whole idea of this episode, if you've been watching regularly, as you know, obviously we talk about discontinued fragrances from my collection that I know and love. I'm not repeating any fragrances. So even though some of these you will have seen in my collection in different videos, um, you know, whether it be a perfumer's portfolio, this is not a top 10 on one of the notes or whatever it is, um, the discontinued fragrance videos, I'm not repeating any of the fragrances. So if you go to the playlist and you click on Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances, you can watch all the episodes and you won't see any of these repeat, unless I made a mistake. But I do have a master list and I'm not repeating any of them. So again, some of them are completely discontinued. Some of them, the distributor has changed or the version has changed enough where I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, if you're going to buy the fragrance, you should go for the older version and I'll tell you the, you know, distributor or what clues to look for on the bottle, that kind of thing. Uh, but before we do that, we are going to do the traditional scent of the day and today it's a doozy. Oh, I mean, one of my pure loves in the perfume game is leather. You guys know that I'm a sucker for leather or suede or anything like that. And this is a fragrance called Tom of Finland by the house of Atat Libre de Orange or Eldo. Uh, and look at the color of the juice in this bottle. This is a vintage bottle. The new bottle doesn't have this matte black cap. Uh, it's got some differences on it. Um, but long story short is this is this is not in the video. This was not going to be in the video. This was just kind of my scent of the day. The new juice is completely clear. So I don't know if there's been a reformulation. I would think maybe there has been since the new juice is totally clear. And look at the color of the juice in this bottle. It just looks totally different from the stuff they're selling now. But I don't know. I've never done a comparison. Um, so, you know, if you love leather... This is an Antoine Lee creation, by the way, too. One of the rebels of the perfume world. And this is basically this aldehydic, almost like lemon meringue type opening. And if you've smelled some of his other creations, like for example, if you've smelled stuff like um, Rien, or if you've smelled stuff like Je Suis Un Homme, which made an appearance because this is discontinued. This was in one of my episodes. Uh, and this is an Antoine Lee. This is an Antoine Lee. Rien, Je Suis Un Homme, and um, Tom of Finland. This is the trifecta. Antoine Lee, Eldo fragrances for me. Uh, and so if you've smelled some of the blending that he has kind of done with the leather, it will smell a little bit familiar in Tom of Finland because you get, I think, some of the same captive molecules. Like I think, for example, he uses a uh, note of saffron in here, which is one of the big oil houses captive molecules for saf for saffron so you get this saffron aldehydic almost like lemon meringue type opening which sounds very strange but when you mix it with that smoky birch leaf the the green pine the pepper and of course that suede and they claim an ambergris note i don't know if there's real ambergris in here or not but uh, even if it's not necessarily real if it's ambroxan salty ambroxan that's supposed to smell like ambergris. They did a fantastic job and then they topped it off with this vanilla. But it doesn't go super sweet. It stays true to the theme of that suede leather. It's just beautiful. Um, but leather's an easy sell for me. So this could be a little bit off-putting to someone who doesn't just love, love, love leather because it's got that strange aldehydic lemon meringue you know, smoky, spicy, leathery, suede thing going on. It's it's admittedly strange, but Eldo is a strange house, but they do strange very well. And if you want a leather fragrance that's outside of the norm, Tom of Finland is one to put on the list. I would call it more of a suede feel, although it could be like a leather suede mixture, you know, that kind of thing. 
Okay, let's get into the list. Um, I've got some absolute doozies for you on this one. This is going to be a major, major video. Uh, there's some big time names in here that I've been wanting to talk about. And again, this is just kind of an excuse uh, for me to talk about a bunch of different fragrances. So let's get it started from a house that I'm not really too smitten with, although there is a discontinued fragrance from this house that is on my to buy list. It's just impossible to find. I won't pay what they're asking. Uh, this is the one that I do have in my collection, though, from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjohn. This is Absolute Pour Le Soir. So Absolute Pour Le Soir was launched in 2010 when he launched his house, or launched his perfume house. And uh, this is one of the uh, first fragrances that he came out with in 2010. And um, Absolute Pour Le Soir is this little, cha it's a challenging amber. I definitely prefer the way he did the amber here to Grand Soir, I'll tell you that. Grand Soir is a little boring to me. Uh, Absolute Pour Le Soir has this dirty uh, cumin note. So it's like cumin with what they call Bulgarian rose honey. I don't know what that is compared to regular honey. I have no clue how the honey in Bulgaria differs from the honey in France, from the honey in the United States. Uh, but I can tell you that, um, you know, the cumin, the benzoin, the frankincense, there's this uh, sandalwood type note. It doesn't smell anything like the beautiful Mysore sandalwood that I smelled in Santal Galore from Ariz Ladore. But, I mean, what does? I mean, unless you're using the real thing. It smells a little bit more punchy, you know, a little bit more amber woody, if you will. Uh, and the opening has this sweetness factor that kind of bothers me, you know, if I can, once I get past the first 10 or 15 minutes and I let it settle down, I enjoy the fragrance. Um, but Francis Kirkjohn has this very specific style and, you know, he's kind of, uh, leached on to what sells in the marketplace and what sells is kind of simplicity, sweetness, that kind of stuff. And it's worked for him and he's just kind of stuck with it. Some people call his fragrances uninspiring and boring, and I completely see what they're saying. Here, he took a chance, and he tried to do something different, but his style still pokes through, and you have to kind of get past that. You know, this is probably the closest fragrance that he's made for real fragrance lovers, as far as complexity and stuff like that goes, and I'm glad to have it. Um, the other discontinued fragrance that I would love to have is a fragrance called Sealed de Gum. And I have a decant of that. I would love a full bottle, but the bottle prices are outrageous. I won't pay what uh, what they're asking on the secondary market. It's not worth it to me. Uh, but Absolute Pour Le Soir is definitely going to get a lot of wear uh, this winter by me. And, uh, of course, discontinued. When LVMH bought the house of Francis Kirkjohn, I think they nixed uh, Absolute Pour Le Soir, Cologne Pour Le Soir, and, you know, maybe one or two others like sealed to gum that weren't selling, stuff like that. So we're going to do three Francis Kirkjohn creations all in a row, but they're not all from his house. This next one is from the house of uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and it's called Gaultier Squared. So on my previous videos, I talked about uh, Le Mal Essence de Parfum, Le Mal um, Fleur du Mal, both of those are discontinued. So now we're talking about the final discontinued fragrance, or... There is one other I could talk about, but the final discontinued, um, real discontinued fragrance in my collection. It's called Gaultier Squared. So the whole point of Gaultier Squared is that uh, Gaultier Squared was meant to kind of be a play on words. Like, either gender could wear it, men or women. It's Gaultier Squared. And it came with two bottles kind of back to back, like um, almost magnetized to each other. So each bottle is 120 mils. You got 240 mils of juice. You got a lot of juice when you bought this, this pack, this bundle. Um, and Gaultier Square is back to his basic formula. This came out in 2005. Absolute Pour Le Soir came out in 2010. So this came out five years earlier. And um, Gaultier Square is this uh, oriental semi-sweet vanilla thing, if you will. My wife thinks it smells like cake batter, and I agree with her. Uh, it does have this cake batter s generic vibe to it. Um, one of my commenters said that someone at work used to wear this fragrance, and they used to call him Powder Puff, and I completely understand why they would say that, because it has this vanilla cake sweetness to it. 
and he uses those generic white musks that he loves to use, and I absolutely despise those fragrance, those white musks. Uh, this is another one where this will, this 120 mil bottle will set you back to $50, $300. It's not worth that at all. If you find someone that's willing to sell it to you for 100 bucks or something, and you love generic vanilla amber fragrances, go for it. Someone told me they get this smokiness in the dry down. I haven't received gotten much of that yet but then again I don't like wearing it because it's so boring but uh, once winter rolls around and I really whip out my ambers um, you know this will this will get put on the to wear list so Gaultier squared is the next discontinued fragrance and then a recent discontinuation I think within the last year or two uh, this is Narciso Rodriguez for him eau de toilette now Narciso Rodriguez for him eau de toilette is Another one of Francis Kirkjohn's attempts at being more creative, and I don't think this sold very well because this has this challenging aspect to it. If you take a look at the bottle, it almost looks like a nail polish bottle, right? With that gray um, nail polish vibe. Some people say it smells like wet concrete, like it smells like concrete after the rain, and I completely understand what they're saying. Um, there is this mixture of lavender pink pepper, and they list violet, but I get this violet leaf note, which violet leaf gives off this gasoline-like accord, almost like you're sniffing Fahrenheit, you know, uh, which is the most famous violet leaf fragrance of all time. This has a little bit of that in there. It also has slight touches of that white musk I talked about, but they're not as amped up as in Gaultier Squared, uh, and it has small touches of patchouli, okay? Now, there's another discontinued fragrance. I don't want to mention it yet because I'm going to talk about it in a later um, disc Ramsey's Ramblings on discontinued fragrances that smells similar to this that I appreciate more because the patchouli is amped up. So I'll talk about that one day in the future. This one, the patchouli is not as amped up. It seems more to focus on the lavender, the musk, the violet leaf, the amber. There is patchouli here. But it just doesn't seem as, you know, amped up as the other fragrance I'll talk about soon. Um, but Narciso Rodriguez, for him, was a fantastic designer for someone who wanted to smell different, who wanted to kind of go against the grain, but didn't want to wear something completely unwearable. You know, they wanted to wear something that still sort of fit in with the designer mold. Uh, and Narciso Rodriguez, for him, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, I think it's... Uh, now, that being said, as soon as it got discontinued, the scalpers put their prices up to $200 a bottle. Is this worth $200 for 50 ml? No, absolutely not. But uh, if you find a good deal still, or a partial or something, if you want to try it, um, this is definitely one to uh, put on the to sniff list, especially if you're into that DNA, that violet leaf gasoline-like DNA Um very unique fragrance. Uh, it's perfect for the rain. This is absolutely perfect for the rain because it gives off that wet concrete vibe like it just rained. Like fresh rain just hit dry concrete, that kind of vibe. I understand what people are saying there. Okay, now we're going to go to a niche fragrance that is very similar to two of my favorite fragrances of all time. So the niche fragrance is from the house of Bois 1920 and it's very similar to Davidoff's Zeno and Guerlain's Heritage, two of my favorite fragrances of all time. This is called Bois 1920 Extreme. And Bois 1920 Extreme is very, very similar to those two fragrances. The mixture of the lavender, um, the dry, sweaty, clary sage, the uh, vanilla, the tonka, the geranium, uh, the sandalwood, the cedarwood, I think there's probably, even though it's not a listed note, I think there's probably some patchouli in here, which surprises me that it's not a listed note because I get a lot of patchouli from this. Um, but it will definitely remind you of Zeno. Um, the, the sandalwood is kind of, you know, it'll remind you of like the reformulated bottles of Ego East, that kind of sandalwood that Chanel started to use once they couldn't use the real Mysore sandalwood anymore. Um, but it's a good fragrance. I like it. I like it a lot, actually, because it fits my personality perfectly. Heritage and Zeno are two of my absolute favorites. But um, for a niche fragrance to be so similar, I'm torn. So now I've got like, 
I've got like four fragrances in this style. I've got um, Danger by Roja, Heritage, Zeno, and now Bois 1920 Extreme. And I would even maybe put something in this similar style. YSL Jazz kind of reminds me a little bit of that DNA. Her um, Escada Pour Homme from 93 reminds me a little bit of that DNA. So I have a lot of fragrances in this DNA, which I love. But it's like, when is enough enough? You know what I mean? Honestly, when I wear this DNA, what I really want to reach for are Heritage and Zeno. Those are just, those are the ones I really, you know, crave. So, um, but it'll get used because I love that DNA so much. Okay, now we're going to go to a very strange bird. Excuse me whilst I hydrate before we go to the strange bird here. Okay. Um... Fiji. All right, uh, so we're going to go to a discontinued fragrance from the 90s. Now, this fragrance has three iterations. Um, the first one came out in the late 70s. The second one came out in the early 90s. This is the second iteration. This came out in 91. And then they released a third version in 2005. So, um, or 2006 or something like that. So this has been through many iterations. Someone told me that the first iteration from the 70s is completely different. Um, and this version from the early 90s is completely different. And the one they released in 2006 under the same name is completely different. I hate it when brands do that. But I understand this is not a very well-known brand. I never hear anyone talk about this fragrance. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit torn because I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to use their name to sell bottles to, you know, old timers that used to wear the juice, but I'm not a big fan of that strategy. So this is called Balestra. The name of the house is um, um, Renato Balestra. Renato Balestra uh, Porom. So the original came out in either 78, 79, or this one came out either, depending on which source you listen to, like I said, 80s or early 90s. I don't know which one is correct. There are different iterations of that. And this note, what makes this so unique is one of the fragrances, one of the um, uh, fragrance directories, base notes, says this came out in 82. One of them says it came out in 91. And so it smells like it came out in 91, but if base notes is correct that this came out in 82, this is a revolutionary fragrance because this is using fresh, aromatic, marine notes. It smells like the early 90s, to be honest with you, because it has this very strange um, marine note listed. Uh, but if base notes is correct, this is one of the earliest marine fragrances. And it's not a marine fragrance. It's a fragrance with a marine note is the way that I would describe it because it has this fresh feeling when you first spray, this fresh floral feeling, you know, almost like you're spraying something like Givenchy en Sense, something like that. Uh, and, and it has a base, a very masculine base, vetiver, oak moss, guyac wood, amber, and musk. But it has that crazy marine note, but it's done very well. I mean, if you like uh, some of the marine fragrances that I talked about actually liking, forget Aqua de Jo or any of that. If you like stuff like uh, Creed's Arafa, uh, if you like Mario Valentino's Ocean Rain, right? Uh, if you like, there was a dirty um, late 80s fragrance from Aramis called New West that I just got a bottle of, and I got a recent bottle, and it's still, I really liked it. If you like those kind of 80s, early 90s blend before it went just straight aquatic. Check this one out. This is an interesting buy. No one's talking about this, by the way. It's got a cool cap. Um, you know, it's like you're playing Tetris with the cap. And um, it's it's uh, distributed by Waruska and Joel. Uh, and, I mean, for, for, for a cheapie, I don't know if this is still a cheapie, but I got it for a cheap price. It's definitely one to put on the to sniff list. Um, a little bit of that early 80s, maybe dihydromersinol vibe to it too. So it feels like it kind of sits on both spectrums, early 80s and early 90s. Um, interesting fragrance. I would love to know which one is correct. If it came out in the early 80s 
or the early 90s, but uh, that's that's uh, Balestra pour homme. Okay, now we're going to go to the house of uh, Capucci, and I probably could have included Capucci pour homme in here because I have a vintage bottle of that, but I didn't because it's still being marketed. Uh, and I, I can't say the one I have is, I know the older stuff has more oak moss and stuff, but I can't say if it's been completely neutered because I've never smelled the new stuff. Um, but I do know that this is totally discontinued and this is my favorite Capucci. It's called Punjab. And Punjab came out in the late seventies, 1979. It's this woody spicy thing. Uh, that will remind you a lot of Caron's Yategan. If you um, have smelled Yategan, if you know that mixture of almost like, um, you know, like you're smelling leaves on the ground with heavy 70s masculine spices, lots of artemisia, marjoram, pine, carnation, old school carnation, uh, that heavy use of pine and resins, uh, balsam fir, oak moss, uh, there's leather and myrrh in the base. So this is a heavy fragrance. This is no joke. You know, if you like your fragrances intense and you like those old style 70s, early 80s, strong powerhouse fragrances, Punjab is one. Not many people talk about. Um, someone mentioned that the name offended them. I mean, you know, it, it was the late 70s. They didn't think about stuff like that back then. So I'm not going to give it a negative mark for that. I'm also not going to not try the fragrance because of the name. Um, I love this stuff. It's my favorite Capucci. I have Capucci Porome, which I like. I don't love. Uh, and I'm going to show you the next one. Uh, if you like your fragrances, maybe not as intense or in your face as Punjab. Punjab is masculine to the core. It's, you know, chest hair popping out of your shirt. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's that kind of vibe. Uh, if you like your fragrances like that, go for Punjab. If you like something a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more refined, a little more office friendly, I would say. Refined isn't the right word, because I find Punjab very well done. Uh, but a little bit more office friendly. You could check out R. de Capucci. And R. de Capucci, this is a little 10 ml. You can see it's got the short ingredient list. Um, and Art de Capucci is probably one of the most oak moss heavy fragrances I've ever smelled. Um, but it has that Capucci Porome lightness. So if you ever smell Capucci Porome, it has this bitter opening. And Art de Capucci has that bitter opening as well with lots of bergamot, lime, orange, lemons. I mean, just a citrus melange, if you wanted to say that with some greenness and aldehydes and rose. But to me, what makes this fragrance very unique is, even though there is leather in the base, it's not as strong as Punjab. Punjab is very strong, very in your face. Um, and Art de Capucci gives you this amazing mossy feel and this oak moss in the base. It's very um, oak mossy. In fact, when I did my, this is not a top 10 oak moss video, I told you that this is one of the ones to really mark down. I mean, some fragrances have oak moss, and then some fragrances have oak moss, if you know what I mean. This is one of the ones that has oak moss for real. Uh, and so if you really like mossy, uh, textured fragrances with depth, if you miss the good old days of oak moss, uh, that, that deep, you know, almost like you're underground, almost like you're in a tunnel, and pieces of the tunnel, pieces of the dirt are falling on you, that kind of vibe, check out Art de Capucci. Um, you know, and, and when it rains, this is absolutely stunning. So, those are my two discontinued Capuchis. Let's go to the house of Ralph Lauren. Uh, this is going to be a fragrance that's still in production, but I would urge you to buy the vintage. This is the great Polo Green, one of my favorite pine fragrances of all time. One of my favorite masculine fragrances of all time. Now, this is a Warner version. I'm not going to tell you to go hunt down the Warner version because they're getting very rare to find. You can see it says Warner right there. Um, I, I would tell you to hunt down either the Warner version or the Cosmere version. Those are the two, Cosmere or Warner. Once it gets to Parfums International or whoever the hell is distributing their stuff now, fragrance, fine fragrances or 
Fragrance International or Fragrances Inc. or whatever the hell the name is, um, I would tell you to try to find a vintage because this fragrance relies so much on that green, heavy oak moss. It's lost a step. I've smelled the new stuff. Um, I guess if you reapply every hour, it might give you the same feel, but this stuff lasts 12 hours. I mean, it's so masculine. It has that beautiful pine, tobacco, oak moss combo with old school tarragon and coriander. I just love it. Um, green basil. It's so green. It's one of my favorite green fragrances of all time. Um, I know some modern green fragrances got a lot of hype, like Synthetic Jungle and, you know, stuff like that. But for me, this is the, this is the green beast. This is the green beast for me. Everyone says, uh, the Blue Beast interlude. Uh, Epic Man by Amouage is not the green beast. This is the green beast. And I love it. I mean, I think this is what, this is what men should smell like to me. Um... Probably because when I was a kid, I was born in the mid-80s, you know, a lot, a lot of men who were well-to-do wore polo green. That was like the I've made it fragrance, right? Um, and then to kind of keep things fresh but not change things too much, they released this little gem. This is called Polo Crest. Beautiful, actually. It's just a sticker on the front of the bottle, but it's beautiful. Um... Polo Crest. So as you can see, this is a tester. Uh, and Polo Crest is extremely rare. It, you know, if you if you um, made me pick either a Cosmere or Warner bottle of Polo Green or Polo Crest, I would go for Polo Green 10 times out of 10. But if you've already scratched that itch and you want something different, Polo Crest is very interesting because it adds this um, additional spiciness to the fragrance, which even if it was in Polo Green, it's turned up in Polo Crest. So you get like this real, um, you know, it keeps the basil and tarragon and juniper of Polo Green, but it adds this like herbal rosemary. So it makes it very herbal. Um, and it adds, it keeps kind of the floral heart construction, uh, very similar. There's no chamomile in Polo Crest. Uh, and what they've done is they've added, or they, it, it does have that caraway note. So they've kept the caraway, um, and pine, uh, leather, oak moss, cedar, uh, but they have completely removed the tobacco. So there's no tobacco in Polo Crest, which is one of the things I like the best about Polo Green. And so this uh, will remind you a little bit of Polo Green, but it kind of goes in its own direction. It's a little bit more herbal. Um, it almost feels like you're smelling cumin in the opening. There, I don't think there's a note of cumin listed, but that er that heavy herbalness almost goes that direction in the opening. And then it kind of dries down to a beautiful leather, oak moss, woody type thing. Uh, I, I like it. I don't love it. Polo Green is a love for me. This is a like, but as far as hunting down and, you know, if you're into memories, this came out in 1991. If you can find a, like, you know, if you can find a partial or a um, decant or something, um, you know, definitely don't pay 500 bucks a bottle for this. It's not worth that. Uh, if you're going to pay big money, find a Warner or Cosmere version of Polo Green. But Polo Crest deserves a shout out. This is one that you know, I don't hear very much about, and there's people that want more information about it. Um, so I'll, I'll do a review on this one day. And then the final polo is going to be Polo Sport. So here's the thing about Polo Sport. Like Polo Green, Polo Sport is still in production. But the new version um, has a blue sprayer instead of a silver atomizer. That's how you can tell. Uh, and if you look at the bottom, the one that you want is distributed by Cosmere. So if you look right there, you'll see it says Cosmere Inc. That's what you want to look for. You want the Cosmere version. The current one, like I said, Fragrances International, and whoever the hell is distributing these, uh, it's lost a step. It doesn't have that, uh, you know, this, this fragrance was all about this amazing mixture of lavender, neroli, with this lovely floral and 
you know, even though there's no traditional aquatic notes, it, it almost makes you, it, it's one of the original, um, what am I trying to say? I can't say it's one of the original aquatics because it's not. Uh, but for me, it, it almost like is one of the bar setting aquatic fragrances. So many kids in, when I was in high school wore this. I mean, this was like a, this is like the scent of high school for me. And, um, even though I never wore it, so many friends wore it that, you know, I'm just immediately transported back to high school. Harry Fremont made this and it does have this seagrass note. So even though there's no marine notes listed, there is seagrass and this, you know, watery musk. Uh, but it's somehow, I think the mixture of the cyclamen, geranium, jasmine, rose, there is rosewood and guyac wood and cedar and sandalwood. So it dries down very woody, which I like, um, and I've got another aquatic coming up next to show you another um, old school uh, marine type fragrance that I actually think is done very well that no one talks about. But if you um, if you are going to try to buy this fragrance, pay the extra money. I think it's I think it was only when I bought this three years ago, it was only I think 30, 40, 50 bucks more to get the Cosmere version over just the, the regular version they were issuing now. I don't know about the vintages now because I know vintage prices have exploded, but if you can hunt down a Cosmere version, do it. That, that would be my recommendation. That's why I'm including Polo Sport in the list. Go for the Cosmere. Okay, and by the way, I have a story with that because I actually purchased a Cosmere. The guy sent me a Cosmere box, but inside was the current fragrance. I was so pissed. I'll never buy from that guy again. And he's one of the big sellers on eBay too. Um, but I won't buy from him again. He's blacklisted on Ram channel. All right, next, uh, we're going to go to Jean Patou Voyager. Now this fragrance has a very interesting story behind it because, um, what ended up happening is the in-house perfumer for the house of Jean Patou is Jean Carlio. And Jean Carlio was at the end of his career in 1994. Okay, so Polo Sport and um, Voyager came out the same year. Um, Polo Sport's much more youthful. Voyager's much more grown up. And because what ended up happening is they basically twisted his arm. They said, listen, we're not asking you anymore. I think Chenille owned the house of uh, Jean Patou at the time. They said, we're not asking you anymore if, you know, we want you to make a, a aquatic fragrance. We are demanding that you make it. You are the in-house perfumer, and we are demanding you make us an aquatic. So, as is Jean Carlio's normal ways, which is why I love him so much, is he said, okay, fine, I'll make you an aquatic. And what's so amazing about this fragrance, and this, by the way, people don't know this, but this has real Mysore sandalwood in it. Everyone is all about, oh, you know, Mysore Sandalwood. They'll pay $1,500 for a bottle of uh, Jean Patou Privé, which I don't think that's worth it at all. Uh, in fact, I don't even rate the Privé very high. I much prefer Jean Patou Pour Homme. But even then, 1000 bucks, 1500 is not worth it. You know, maybe three, 400 But um, this has this Mysore Sandalwood in the base, cedar wood. Huge slug of oak moss and old school lavender. So it's like he created this lavender sage, you know, traditional masculine fragrance and just put a little drop of uh, calone in the top or whatever the ingredient was that of the day to make it marine. Uh, a little bit of grapefruit, a little bit of orange and a traditional old school masculine fragrance underneath that. So you get the lavender the sage, the oak moss, the sandalwood for eight hours, you know, when you wear this. It's an eight, eight hour fragrance for an aquatic. It's amazing because it's built on a traditional fine French perfumery chassis. Uh, and the first five minutes are aquatic. The first five or 10 minutes are aquatic and that's it. So, you know, you can just spray this on, close your eyes if you don't like aquatic. And the rest of the fragrance is a Jean Carlio production through and through kind of stuff people are paying a thousand dollars for. I got this bottle for 40 bucks this year, earlier this year. Um, it's just amazing how hype um, from various channels affects 
fragrance pricing, especially these vintages. Like I said, my source sandalwood in here. Now, I did a early impression on Santal Galore by the house of uh, Arizadori. That has an amazing Mysore sandalwood in it. But it's not, everyone thinks because, oh, it's Mysore, it's going to be this giant bomb. It's not. Mysore sandalwood is creamy. It's smooth. It's, you know, spongy. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a beast. It's not a bomb. It's a very, you know, collect your thoughts calm down. It's a very calming scent. It's not going to blow you out of the water. If you want to be blown out of the water, get Punjab or get yourself a bottle of Amouage uh, Interlude Man or something like that. But um, if you want to smell Jean Car one of Jean Carlio's final acts as a, as a perfumer, and you can find this for cheap, value for money is through the roof. Um, amazing summer scent. Okay, next. We're going to go to the house of Jill Sander, a house that I absolutely love. And what I love about them is they have this DNA, and they stick to the DNA of the house. I've smelled Jill Sander, man, pure man, man two, all that stuff, woman one, woman two, they're all amazing. Uh, the, ones that, the one that I have a full bottle of is Jill Sander, man, slash feeling man. It's the same fragrance. Uh, depends on which database you look in. Sometimes it's listed as Jill Sander, man. Sometimes it's listed, so here I actually have two versions. Jill Sander Man, distributed by Jill Sander Cosmetics. This is the full bottle. And then this is a partial that I have that Anuj sent me. Same, same fragrance, same bottle. Jill Sander Feeling Man, distributed by... Who the hell is this distributed by? Ah, Lancaster Group. There you go, Lancaster Group. Both are amazing. This one came first. The original Jill Sander Cosmetics Inc. Uh, and then this one came. But um, what's what if you like fragrances like Dracar Noir, this is Dracar Noir perfected for me because it has this um, it has a couple notes Dracar Noir doesn't have. Number one, it has this amazing fruitiness that makes it wearable all time of the year, anytime, even in summer. Uh, it still has that beautiful green balsam fur, but it has this fuzzy, powdery orris that's just unbelievable. And then you mix it with the amber, because it, it's an amber base. Uh, oak moss, tobacco, sandalwood, cedar wood, patchouli. It's just a stunning masculine fragrance. And, um, you know, I guess I would say if you had to pick one, if you can find the one that says Man by Jill Sanders Cosmetic, get that. But if all you can find is the Lancaster version... This is still absolutely amazing. I mean, you can see the juice color is actually a little bit darker on the um, Jill Sander Man versus Feeling Man, but they're exactly the same fragrance. I've compared them. They're exactly the same. Um, so, Jill Sander Man from 89 or Feeling Man is the next one on the list. Discontinued, of course, but uh, what a fragrance. Next, we're going to get into some big hitters here. There's four left, and big hitter time. Okay, so again, this is one you've seen on the channel, but it's never been featured in the Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrances, so we're going to make it official. This is Darby by the House of Guerlain. My God. This scent... Oh, this is CEO, boss level. I mean, seriously, C-suite. Okay, top floor. This is it. This is um, to me, you know, if if I got invited to go um, meet the CEO, this is what you wear. In fact, this may actually be too much because you may stamp your authority all over the CEO wearing this. Seriously, it's that kind of scent. There is no screwing around with this. This is this is. Um, Force march to the top of the mountain, and you're going to complete your task, and that's that. Um, woody, spicy. The, it reminds me a little bit of Patau, Patu Poron, a little bit, because it has the same mixture of that green, um, not even green, but there's some citruses, of course, in the opening. I think there's Artemisia in this, just a little bit, though, not too much, but it's that mixture of like that peppery nutmeg with pimento, which is the same mixture that Patu, 
Patau Porom has. And it also has this uh, leather in the base and oak moss, huge amounts of oak moss. And of course, sandalwood, which Patau Por Patu Porom is known for its real Mysore sandalwood uh, and vetiver and pimento and uh, pepper and clary sage. And so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of features that Derby has that Patu Porom also has. To me, I could wear either one and be completely in the exact same boss frame of mind. You know, you want to walk into a room and com command the room, completely command it, all eyes on you. Everyone stops talking when you walk in. Darby, absolutely, hands down, this would be my choice. That's why I don't wear it as often as I would love to, because I'm like, what if I run into a situation in the future, in a decade or two, and this is what I want to wear, and I don't have it. So I just don't wear it. Honestly, I would wear this all the time. I mean, this, this could be signature scent for me, easily. Um... And it's a shame it's discontinued. Came out in 85. Um, and even the version they redid from 2005, I believe, uh, is completely discontinued. Um, the, the Thierry Vassar recreation is discontinued, which I have a decant of that. So I will do a comparison video for you guys one day. Okay, now, next, we're going to go to the House of Ted Lapidus from 1978. This is Ted Lapidus Porom. Look at the detail on this bottle. Let me just show you. Look at this. This is raised. Okay. There's the sprayer. Look at that. I mean, for 1978, this is absolutely stunning stuff. And the smell, my God, this is right up my alley. Um... What's amazing about this scent, this is only a little 30 mil bottle. I wish I had a 100 mil. I wish I had 200 mil of this stuff. But um, it's a 30 mil bottle. Is um, It has this spicy, um, leathery spruce note. Okay? So make spices, aldehydic in the top, citruses, of course, old school coriander, thyme, Beautiful combo. Um, and green spruce, which is very rarely used. Lesson Demo Dabla's Oriental Velours uses spruce. Um, and a couple other fragrances I've talked about recently, too. The spruce note in here is outstanding. With leather, and think about vintage castorium, labdanum. Like, kind of the vintage castorium... Labdanum, you would smell in a fragrance like uh, Balenciaga's Portos or 1985 uh, Eigener Silver. Okay, think about the castorium in those fragrances. It's here from 78. All right, this is like the daddy. This is one of the ones that sent the trend. Uh, unfortunately, it's been long gone and it's very, very hard to find. I have a perfume god person to thank for this. So, um, Yes, review coming soon. And then we're going to go to just as rare of a scent, Perfume Godparent again. Uh, this is Dunhill's Blend 30. Look at this box, first of all. This is a box, okay? Um, look at that. Let's open this up, shall we? Look at this. Absolutely stunning. Let's take her out. Look at this. Tell me if that is not holy grail worthy. At the top of a mountain. Look at this. My God. Uh, woody, spicy, lavender, car old school carnation. This came out in 78, same year as the Ted Lapidus Porom. Um, look at this box. Look at, let me see if I can show you the bottom of the sticker. Please don't spill. Uh, just, I mean, the quality of this. 
the quality of all of these little pieces. I mean, the cap is plastic, but it has this stopper that makes it stay on, okay? Um, and I just, I mean, 250 mils of Dunhill Blend 30. I uh, just cannot wait to dive into this and talk about it. Some people actually compare it to Darby or Patau Pour Homme. It's got that uh, real oak moss. It doesn't have the Mysore sandalwood, I don't think, but it does have sandalwood. Uh, maybe it's Mysore, I don't know. Uh, but it's compared to um, Patau Pour Homme, Patu Pour Homme. It doesn't have the pimento, nutmeg, vibe that's kind of what it's missing but it does have this lavender uh neroli rosemary vintage rosemary paco raban rosemary um i mean the quality of of in in the box Ev everything i mean everything is just top notch it comes in this little sleeve um just stunned amazed to have this so thank you perfume god people okay so we will be talking about that pretty soon oh shit sorry let's try this again shall we get back in your home go back in your home you are too good to be out of your home there you go no! All right, I'm gonna have to play with it later. It's not, uh, it's not part, it's not uh, cooperating. All right, let's just do the final one. The reason I decided to do this video today, by the way, is because on Parfumo, it says this is discontinued, which breaks my heart. Uh, because this is one of my favorite leather fragrances, uh, and it's Pure Distance M. So we talked about this. Rich Mitch and I are going to do a stream on this very soon. Pure Distance M. Um, one of my favorite leathers. It's supposed to smell like uh, the inside of a sports car. There you go. There, there's the picture of Pure Distance M right there. See that? That's Pure Distance M. Ma the Aston Martin in the background. Um, that's what Pure Distance M smells like to me. Uh, it's just, it's, it, it, it easily could be a signature scent for me as well because it has this leather with this cystus labdanum, this resinous la labdanum, um, and uh, oak moss, vanilla, vetiver, cinnamon, bergamot, lemon, jasmine, rose, but it's that leather, it's that take on, almost like a take on Bellamy, like a niche take on Bellamy. But it focuses on the leather. So where uh, Roja's Fetish gives you little more touches of like the wispy incense. Not even wispy incense, like serious burnt incense. Pure Distance M doesn't give you that incense smoke vibe. It really focuses on the leather. The leather note is what it really focuses on. And it really is the inside of a of an Aston Martin. It's beautiful. So, Pure Distance M. There you have it. Uh, thanks for watching. Do let me know your thoughts. If you uh, have experience with some of these. Uh, if you would like to try some of these. You know, just uh, love hearing your thoughts down below. Comments and likes, subscriptions. All that stuff always helps the channel. We are growing. We are growing rapidly. Slowly, I'm getting more and more and more people commenting and, you know, joining the channel than I ever have before. Uh, and so I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful to everyone who has been kind enough to send me stuff. Uh, the Perfume God people are way too kind. And so um, you'll be hearing about some of these gems very soon that you haven't seen on my channel. So thank you everyone for watching. Cheers. And I hope to see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.